Once again, thank you all for coming out and uh, participating in this event as part of Chicago Ideas Week this week. I'm uh, Josh Golden, the CEO of TableXI, one of the uh, two organizations involved in creating this, uh, this wonderful project that we're going to share with you uh, this evening. Facing Instability is a compilation of a thousand edited, curated videos about coping with spinal cord injuries. Rather than sort of try to explain this to you with words, we're just going to show you a quick introductory video that's part of the website and uh, should it probably help you understand better. Suddenly, your world changes. When our daughter Vicky was injured, we felt alone. We needed to hear how other families dealt with a spinal cord injury, but there was no one to ask. So we asked. We interviewed more than 100 people about the spinal cord injuries in their families, so you could learn from their experiences. The longer I have my disability, the more comfortable I become and the more a part of my identity it is. But I just wish that I would have known that the things that I enjoyed before and the way that I was before, it was all going to be the same. We talked to people with spinal cord injuries and to their mothers, fathers, spouses, siblings and children. There's a thousand things as a caregiver that I wasn't prepared for. I was stressing about being normal. Truth be told, I was in a severe depression the first two months. I wanted to know, but at the same time, I didn't want to know. We interviewed top spinal cord injury experts about the important information you need to know right away. And we compiled the most comprehensive spinal cord injury resources section on the web. Now, five years out, I'm surprised at how normal our lives have become. To a large extent, we're in many respects to where we were before the accident. It's all here. Don't let grass grow under your chair. You know, do something with yourself. At FacingDisability.com. There are a great number of people who were involved in this project. Closest to me is Thea Flom. She's the innovator behind the site and really the founder of FacingDisability.com. She came to us about three years ago with a big idea. Prior to Facing Disability, Thea was an Emmy Award winning television producer who spent 35 years developing shows, including Siskel and Ebert at the movies. I always like to imagine this moment where Thea said, hey, Gene Siskel, meet Roger Ebert, let's do a show. <laughs> I, that may or may not be how it happened, but it's like how I like to think about it. Next to Thea, we have Jordan Ho. He's currently a digi the digital strategist at Zocalo Group, but he's also a partner emeritus of TableXI, where he worked closely with Thea to lead the site's strategy and development. Jordan helped found TableXI and has been an active digi digital innovator in Chicago since bailing on medical school, taking an apprenticeship with renowned painter Ed Paschke, and eventually discovering that the internet provided an even more interesting canvas for his work. Daniel Strabley is a senior designer at TableXI, who established the site's look and feel and championed the needs of the user throughout the process. Daniel's worked with TableXI since 2009, where he was the first designer to join our very engineering-dominated team. Let's talk to Thea first. Um, Thea, I just guess I'm trying to understand, um, how did you come up with this and deciding to do it? Well, the first insight, the first important insight that we had in our family is that a spinal cord injury affects the whole family. Uh, it's traumatic. <coughs> it takes families' lives and changes them forever. It happens very quickly. Overnight, people are living one life, and the next day they're living another. And in this country, we operate on something called the medical model, which means we treat the person who's sick, the person with the injury. But we don't pay attention, really, to the person around, people around them. And we knew this in our own family. We used to say that Vicki was injured, but her sister was also paralyzed. So the first and most important moment that we had was the whole family is involved and nobody really does anything for the family. When something like this happens, a traumatic injury happens to a family, there are families in the room here who know this, um, it's an isolating experience. Spinal cord injuries are relatively rare. There are about 5,000 of them in the United States every year. Thankfully, that's a small number, but what it means is that for most families, they don't know anybody else who has a member of their family with a spinal cord injury. And although people say they understand and think they understand, they really feel 
kind of isolated and very much alone. Yeah, I think that really speaks to the, the next point we want to make. But you have such a small community of people who have, who have gone through a moment like this. And the internet is such an interesting way to be able to connect a small group of people to another small group of people and have them actually be able to find each other. I guess, you know, you got the internet, it's like this sort of slightly impersonal medium. I'm interested to hear you, uh, you folks talk about how did you go about personalizing the site? Because one of the things that strikes uh, me as I look through it and work on it is that it's so personal. Well, what ha the way it happened was we played with a number of different ideas for connecting families and doing things with families. Chris Chukowski, who's sitting here, is nodding her head and knows that we did that. And then um, one day, actually, I was uh, surfing the web and I came across a website for people with um, bipolar disorder. And it, uh, it had close-ups of people talking very briefly about their experience. And it was really, it was put together by a drug company and it wasn't a particularly good website. But to me, I mean, I didn't spend 35 years making television programs not to know the power of an image when I see it. And I thought, this works. Maybe we could do something like this. Maybe we could get a whole bunch of people and we could interview them and put their faces up on a website and collect the life experiences of family members of people with spinal cord injuries. So that was the idea, the first part. And then the second part was, it. I believe, uh, two other things. First of all, that the internet is an impatient medium, so that stuff has to really be short. So we had to find a way to focus the questions so that they could be answered briefly. Uh, of the thousand videos, more than a thousand videos that are on our website, I would say perhaps 10% of the non-expert videos, the experts talk longer, uh, are, are over a minute long. That means you can hear lots of different people answer the same question, or lots of different answers from the same person. And so that also mean that we, meant that we had to produce all the video ourselves, which we decided to do and did do, and so we began to interview people and ultimately interviewed more than 100 people. On this website, there are virtually no tears. What you don't want is emotionality. The people who are coming to this website whose families have injured, are perhaps newly injured, they don't need to hear how bad it is. They don't need to hear about suffering. They don't want the details of you reliving, nor would I ask, there are some people, I, nor would I ask you to relive the accident and the pain of it and the remembered pain. And as a matter of fact, it, when, on occasion when people did tear up, Chris knows this, we turned off the cameras. We don't have tears. They don't help. So the level of emotionality uh, and television, emotionality increases communication. For this purpose, it seemed to me that emotionality would diminish it. And so that's a difference. And that's a huge difference, because what you want on TV is to grab them by the throat. And we don't want to do that here. I had no idea, none, about how we would then go about, there was nothing like this, making this accessible to people who were using it on a website. That's where these guys came in. And to add, I mean, to add a little bit to this too, in the beginning, con conceptually, this was, um, you know, everybody's talking about user-generated content. It's like there's obviously people who um, have been injured who have their own uh, information they want to share. And so when we first thought of this, uh, when, when Thea brought it to us, this uh, user-generated content was a part of this. Um, but kind of through our discussions, we very much focused on these videos and how important it was that it was curated, that uh, Thea and Annie spent all this time whittling down this huge world of questions to a set of questions that could be asked to everybody, right? So that, so that the close-up is certainly visually on this person, but it's also a close-up on what we like to think about as data, right? This one question got a close-up as well. The question that you would ask, there were 10, 15 people who had answered the one question. So, those two pieces really go hand in hand. There's a visual close-up that's obviously really powerful, but what the site is actually able to do is give 
a real close up to this one question that, that may be resonating in somebody's head or, or somebody wants a bunch of different answers to. This is a key page. Um, this is the watch a video page. Tell us about this page and, and what, you know, as you were doing the UX uh, design, like what are we trying to get people to do? Why, you know, what were the sort of general design principles as we were building this out? Okay. Uh, the great thing about this page is you're on a specific question by a specific person. Uh, after answering it, you can see more answers to the question by other people. Or you can drill down into more of George's videos if you want to follow his story. Uh, we can also link up to the top where you can go back up to the topic question. So maybe you want to stay inside this topic, but not necessarily this question. Uh, there's always a good link or a good call to action to get you back up a level or get you one level deeper. <clears throat> uh, some things we did when we did this site, I mean, Besides, we made you know the buttons nice and big, uh, the colors are nice and friendly. Uh, like what Theo was saying, we wanted to really focus on not the emotional aspect of the site, but on the person aspect of the site. So as you navigate through, you'll see it's nothing but faces of people. I think this this is a really big question: so success measurement and and why this matters. How do we know it's working? We know it's working because we get feedback all the time from people. Uh, we were just in Philadelphia shooting at McGee Rehab there, and the people there, the professionals there, and the people with spinal cord injuries who we interviewed already knew about the website and were really proud and happy that they could be part of it. Um, we have, we're being increasingly asked to uh, make the videos available for other kinds of use. There are people in Australia who are putting together um, a, an online video teaching program uh, for people in third world countries dealing with spinal cord injuries who have asked to use our videos. The University of Virginia is developing a testing, a program whereby they will teach people how to self-examine to prevent pressure ulcers, a huge problem for people with spinal cord injuries. It just, uh, just a terrible, enormous problem, and they're using our videos to do that. They have asked me, this, is, this was just amazing to me, uh, to be on the advisory council of the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center, which is a fancy medical term, knowledge translation, for be taking the results of research and translating them so people can understand exactly what you've done. And they certainly didn't ask me to do that because of what I knew about television, but because of this website. And uh, we are working with the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago in an attempt to develop um, a website modeled on this website uh, for families dealing with traumatic brain injuries. So do we know that it's working? I, I think that's all pretty good evidence that it's working. The most important evidence is some of the people who are here now who are on the website, people who use the website, they know it works, and uh, that's the most rewarding thing of all. It is now my pleasure <laughs> to introduce Chris Chikowski. Speaking of how it works, Chris Chikowski is the creator, the founder of the Life Center at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. Chris has dealt with families dealing with spinal cord injuries uh, with the greatest and most intelligent and kindest sensitivity uh, for well over 20 years. So I guess if we need somebody to say, yes, this website works and why it works, the best person to explain it is Chris Chikowski, who's sitting right here. Chris, you want to come up? And um, it's really a pleasure to be here tonight. And I'm excited on so many levels because um, for those of you who are in the audience who I've worked with for many years here at Access Living, Access Living was really one of the first pioneers in the whole area of peer counseling services. And um, I mean, we're going back in time quite a bit. And uh, I recall in the early days, the best way to connect with a person, if you couldn't do it in face-to-face, in -face, was you had to find a phone on a street corner and put a quarter in it to be able to connect to someone. Things have really changed <laughs> with technology. So one of the things that makes me so excited about this, obviously because we're in the education arena at the Rehabilitation Institute, 
is that um, we've now taken our teaching to a whole other dimension. Many of you might imagine that when you're faced with uh, an acquired disability, it can be quite shocking and you're not quite sure where to start. And many times people are in a state of grief or um, a lot of fear. And so you're wanting to teach a person, but you really don't have that teaching moment. And a site like this gives an opportunity to ease in to the teaching that needs to take place early on. And actually, it goes on a whole lifetime. Uh, the other piece that makes it so exciting is that it personalizes it. I loved when you talked about personalizing the internet. Um, to be able to have quality film that really picks up the uh, tonation, the body language, the whole feel of that person in terms of their response can be a great comfort to a person and to a family member. And uh, we all know that we're very busy these days. And to be able to go to a site when it's convenient for you is huge, very huge. And a lot of times it's in the middle of the night or in the wee hours of the morning. And so this gives another avenue for that. The other piece I thought uh, that was really striking is how it then gives us a new opportunity for teaching because we don't have a lot of time, in, in some cases, to be able to get to those real pointed pieces. And so we can use now the internet to weave into the patient education experience at the hospital level. And more importantly, the teaching can go on well after they leave the hospital and they're in the community. And I think a hidden gem was in the whole area of staff education. Now the site wasn't intended to educate the professional, but we have a huge opportunity now because we're going to get the personal perspective of people who've been living with a spinal cord injury and insights at many uh, stages of their journey. And so for the professional, this is gonna be a great uh, enhancement excuse me, to the um, teaching, uh, teaching process. So with that, I just wanted to thank you all for everything that you've done. I'm very excited. I can only imagine what's gonna happen in the future with all of this. And I just wanted to add, too, on, on what Chris had said. So when we all had gotten together to just kind of talk about the various things, it, it literally, that was an aha moment for, all, I think, all of us when she shared that it was ultimately going to, um, it affected their staff, right? So when, yeah, when, right. when, when, their sta when the staff that, that works with, uh, who is ultimately a, a caretaker, that's one of the reasons we built this is for the caretakers who are like family, but staff is a caretaker, and, and they can only hear the stories of the people they've actually worked with. Um, and now they have access to all these other stories. So it's just, it allows their care that they're giving to be way more well-rounded and, and informational. So for all of us who had built it, like, we were like, that was another one of those aha moments when we were all like, whoa, that's, we had never even realized. I had never thought of that. It had never occurred to me. No, yeah. to any of us. I wanted to open the floor to see if there were questions that anybody had uh, for the creators or about the process. When you get us all together, the experience of living with a disability is so universal that all those things become secondary to how marginalized you are and how dismissed you are <coughs> and how misunderstood you are. So I totally agree with what you were going to say, and I also wanted to say something about the power of what he has done here. Um, when I broke my neck in 1977, I was in the Rehab Institute for four months. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but now people are in and out in about three weeks. And if you imagine what I went through in four months, I had a chance to bond with other people who were in the hospital, I had a chance to meet all sorts of other people who were coming in and out of therapy for outpatient work. I had an organic way to see other people who had already made the transition and started to accept the whole situation. They're in and out so quick now. They don't get that chance. And, and while all of us in the community are trying to reach them, once you get home, it's pretty lonely to go through that experience. So being able to do it in your home but also being able to do it in the middle of the night when you can't sleep, when you're sitting there thinking, what the hell am I going to do with my whole life? Um, it, it enables you, I think, to start to get outside yourself, start to feel some hope, and then hopefully get on with your life.
because a lot of the tools we used to have to do it have been so squeezed by the changes in healthcare policy and they're even getting worse right now. I can think we can take one more question and then we gotta wrap up. Sir. I'm just gonna quick, quickly say, I was, I've been a, I injured since the age of 16. I was injured uh, through a diving accident, but I will say, I wish this was something that was available to me when I was injured because I didn't have the opportunity to look at people and hear their stories. Um, I didn't have a peer mentor. I didn't have someone who could talk to me about my injury and validate what I feel. And so now, like I said, 30, 31 years later, I'm a peer mentor and I'm sharing my story. And that does work. You know, I, like when I was talking with one of my colleagues at RIC, we've probably reached maybe a thousand people, you know, in, in a year or two years. And it's really a great opportunity to be able to do things like this and to be able to peer mentor. So I love it. Like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm very graciously happy to be a part of it. And thank you for creating it. Yeah. Thank, thank you for being part else. of it. It's the people who make it work. I'd like to thank everybody uh, for coming out tonight. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time in a busy uh, week of lots of interesting things to go in here, and we hope that you um, shared in an aha moment with us. Uh, I would like to specifically thank Access Living for hosting us. Uh, this is a great space. It's great to be able to weave ourselves into uh, other organizations in the area that are relevant to our cause. Um, also to Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, who supplied many of our experts, and especially the expert who came and joined us today in the form of Chris, who we really appreciate her coming out and, and speaking with us today. This wouldn't have happened without Thea, Robert, Vicki, and the whole Hill Foundation, and they've chosen to step up and share their personal stories and, and uh, fund this uh, unbelievable endeavor with their time and money. And uh, it's been an incredible honor to have a chance to work with them. and. Uh, we want to thank them all so much. And then finally, I want to focus everybody's attention that the, the, per, the people we really need to thank the most the most are the people who chose to share their stories in our videos. Um, that is a slice of personal stuff that is not easy to get back out. And uh, while I did not have a chance to participate in the interviewing, uh, it's just amazing. And we really appreciate that even some of them were able to come out tonight. So thank you to the ones who are here. and. Uh, thank you to all of those other folks, and thanks for coming out. Have a good night.